Welcome once again. Right now we're on John chapter 16, verse 16 through 33. Jesus here predicts his death and resurrection. Verse 16, a little while and you will not see me. Again, a little while and you will see me. Some of his disciples therefore said to one another, what is this that he says to us? A little while and you won't see me. And again, a little while and you will see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says? A little while. We don't know what he's saying. Therefore, Jesus perceived that they wanted to ask him. And he said to them, Do you inquire among yourselves concerning this, that I said a little while, and you won't see me, and again a little while, and you will see me? Most certainly I tell you that you will weep and lament, obviously referring to death, but the world will rejoice. Why would the world rejoice? Again, this is another point in this whole thing. I mean, you know what? I need to compile a thing. It's like, you know, a thousand points why modern day Christianity and the way they talk about Jesus and the way people believe about Jesus is wrong. A thousand points. We get, I, I wouldn't doubt we can pull out a thousand points here. Here's another point. Jesus said, when I die, more or less, you guys, the disciples, you know, you guys will weep and lament. You will mourn. But the world, everybody else will rejoice that I'm gone. Why would the world be rejoicing over this Jesus, this loving Jesus that went around, didn't offend anybody, you know, didn't do anything wrong, just healing people, just being everybody's friend, you know, just hugging every tree? Why would the world rejoice? Well, you know, those of you who know the scriptures know that I'm being a little bit sarcastic there. Jesus wasn't this hyper nice guy that just didn't offend anybody. He offended lots of people. He wasn't just this ever loving guy. Now, in you know, in the definition of love these days, you know, I mean, if you really rebuke anybody and come against what they're doing and, you know, this kind of stuff, you oppose them, they say you're hateful. Well, that's what the world was like back then with Jesus. Jesus was testifying that its deeds were evil. Again, John chapter 7, verse 7. There's the 7-7, seven, seven, okay? John 7-7, seven, seven, Jesus said, the world hates me. And he, and he gave us the answer. The, he gave us the reason why the world hates him. He said, because I testify, I'm preaching that its deeds, that its works are evil. You go out there today and you start preaching that the deeds of the world, that what they're doing is evil. If you go out there and publicly preach and you rebuke them and you say what they're doing is evil, they'll hate you too. Actually, in great hypocrisy, they will hate you way more than you hate, every, way more than you are able to hate them, and they're going to call you a hater. You, you get that? That's the truth, okay? The world is going to hate you way more than you're, you're even able to hate them, and they're going to call you a hater in their utter and extreme hypocrisy that we have these days, you know? Yeah, you're a hater. Well, the truth of the matter is that person who's calling you a hater hates you a lot more than you hate them. <laughs> That's the truth. Okay. So Jesus made it clear here. The world will rejoice. Why? Because the world hated him. Why would the world hate him? Because he preached righteousness. He preached Torah. He preached against sin. He preached against hypocrisy. There was hypocrisy back in the world in the world in those days. There is much more hypocrisy in these days. Trust me, there's much more hypocrisy in this world today than there was back then. Moving on with verse 20 in the last half. And Jesus went on to say, You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Hint, hint. A woman, when she gives birth, has sorrow because her time has come. But when she has delivered the child, she doesn't remember the anguish anymore, for the joy of that human being is born into the world. 
Therefore you now have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice. And no one will take your joy away from you. Why did he say no one will take your joy away from you? Because they will be eyewitnesses of his majesty. They will be eyewitnesses that Jesus died, that he was buried, and that he is risen. Verse 23, in that day you will ask me no questions. Well, yeah, you will. I mean, when you see Jesus die and you see him being buried and then three days later you see him, actually he appears to you in fleshly form. I mean, he proved that. It wasn't a ghost. He said, you know, give me something to eat. Ghosts don't eat, okay? <laughs> you know, make, make me a barbecue. Don't, ghosts don't eat a barbecue, okay? When you see that, Jesus said, you're not going to ask any more questions about this because you know, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Most certainly I tell you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Now, I've spoken a lot about what it means to do something in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to go into that you know, in depth right now, but I encourage you, listen to all the teachings, okay? You know, catch up on everything if you if you miss some. You know, I talk a lot about the whole thing about what it means to do something in, in the name of. And you know what? A lot of people today, they ask the Father certain things and they they verbalize the phrase in the name of Jesus, but they don't really do it in the name of Jesus. That's why a lot of their prayers are not answered. That's why so many people pray and they verbalize in the name of Jesus. What I mean by that is, in, you know, in the prayer, somewhere in the prayer, usually at the end, they say, in Jesus' name or in the name of Jesus. And so they say that because what they're trying to do is they're trying to cash in on this promise. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'll do it. You see that the problem is, the reason why your prayers don't get answered is because you don't really, truly ask in the name of Jesus. And, you know, people really, they don't know what it means to actually do something in the name of somebody else. Okay? You can do something in the name of Jesus without ever saying the phrase in the name of Jesus. It's true. Again, check out my other teachings about this. I'm not going to go into detail about it here. Verse 24. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. I have spoken these things to you in figures of speech. But the time is coming when I will no more speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I don't say to you, that I will pray to the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to my Father. Now, Jesus made it very clear here that he existed from before the creation of the world. He existed from before he was incarnated, okay, became a human being, you know, uh, became flesh, okay. He existed with the Father. And so he said, now I'm in the world, but I'm leaving, I'm going back to the Father. So basically it's like I'm going back to the very same state I was in before I came into the world, okay. What I'm trying to say here is this, the very same state that he's in, you know, with the Father. Today, people have visions of Jesus. People, you know, are visited by, you know, dreams. And when the Lord would give them dreams or, you know, visit them by the Holy Spirit and they, they see Jesus in the Spirit, okay? That is exactly the way it was before he came into the world. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? Jesus said, I'm going, I came from the Father. I came into the world. I'm in the world now, but I'm going, I'm leaving, and I'm going to be back, you know, in the same position I was before. So right now, Jesus is in the same position he was in the days of Abraham, in the days of Moses, in the days of Enoch, in the days of Job, okay? 
What I'm trying to say is this. Moses, Abraham, Enoch, Job, David, Isaiah, they all saw Jesus, you know, in the spirit. They all knew Jesus just as, you know, some people do today. There are people, <laughs> you know, I know that you would probably say, oh yeah, for sure. But let me say this. There are people today that actually know Jesus. I mean, they actually have a connection with Jesus. They know him. They, they have seen him in the spirit. They communicate with him. Jesus communicates with them. Okay. In the same way he did with Abraham. That's why Paul said the gospel was preached to Abraham. Abraham knew Jesus. You know, some people believe that Christianity started, you know, in the book of Acts or in the New Testament. Not at all. Not at all. Sure, the first time we see the word Christian. Now, bear in mind, this is an English translation of a Greek word. Okay? Back in those days with Jesus and with the, with the apostles, you know, nobody said the actual English word Christian. Okay? Nobody said that, okay? That didn't exist at that time. But what I mean is what a Christian is, what a Christian actually is, is somebody who actually believes in the Son of God, in Yeshua, in the Word of God, okay? Yeshua is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God, okay? Someone who actually believes in the Word of God, which means you are, you know, you obey, you listen, you hear, you, you believe in it, you know? You can't say, well, I believe in obeying the speed limit if you never obey the speed limit. You can't say, I believe in the Word of God if you never obey the Word of God. Okay? So, Jesus existed back in those days with Moses. That's why Jesus said everything that Moses wrote, everything you read in the Scriptures speaks about me. How can Moses write about Jesus? How can the Torah be all about Jesus? How can the books of Moshe, the books of Moses, be all about Jesus? Because Moses knew Jesus very well. So well that he came to pay him a visit while he was on the earth. The Mount of Transfiguration, remember? Moses came. He didn't say to Jesus, Oh, I never, who are you? No, of course he didn't. He knew exactly who Jesus was. Okay? Jesus existed in the same state back then than he does today. He's with the Father. He was with the Father back then. He's preaching to people. He's leading people in his ways. He did back then. He's now. He's doing it now. Okay? You see what I'm trying to say? Verse 29, His disciples said to him, Behold, now you are speaking plainly and using no figures of speech. Now we know that you know all things and don't need anyone to question you. By this, we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the time is coming, yes, and has now come, that you will be scattered, everyone to his own place, and you will leave me alone. You remember the prophecy that, you know, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered? That was speaking about the cross, you know, when they more or less struck the shepherd when they beat him and, and, and flogged him and the, the sheep was scattered. His disciples were scattered. Verse 32 again, he said, Behold, the time is coming, yes, and has now come that you will be scattered. Talking about his crucifixion. Everyone to his own place and you will leave me alone on the cross. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you these things that in me you may have peace. Isn't that interesting? He's, he's talking about death. He's talking about being persecuted to death. He's talking about something that would scatter all of his beloved friends. And he said, I'm telling you this so that you would have peace. Why would he say that? You see, when God tells you the future, you can have peace about it because you know that God knows. And if you're right with God, you're right with God. Everything's going to be all right with you. So he said here again down here, I've told you these things that in me you may have peace. In the world you have trouble. Yes, 
But cheer up. I have overcome the world. What an awesome, what an awesome way to leave this chapter. God bless you with great revelation and comfort you with his word and with his presence as you go and you seek him and you love him. In the name of Yeshua, amen.